Okay, welcome to another episode of Cork in the North podcast with me, Andrew Ryan. Thanks to every single person who is watching, downloading. Um, uh, we really do appreciate it. We do look at the numbers quite regularly. We're very popular in Paraguay. Uh, looking forward to going over there for a live show pretty soon. Uh, thanks to everyone as well who's bought a ticket to the live show. Uh, Sunday 4th of June, we're doing it at the Dunkerin Church at 3pm afternoon podcast. There's are still tickets available. You can get them on my Instagram, on the YouTube here. Um, it's very simple. Go onto my website as well, andrewryancomedy.com for all the... Uh, the links to the tickets and stuff like that. And if you are coming to my uh, live show recording in the, the Black Box Theatre on March, uh, May the, the 12th, the yeah, Friday the 12th, uh, look forward to seeing you there. Show is uh, sold out and it's going to be filmed. So if you do come, uh, very excited to see you. And thanks very much to everyone that has bought a ticket so far. Uh, no Aaron this week. Uh, he's away. He's still recovering from his uh, special that he recorded at the uh, Lavery's uh, last week. But we were joined by a very funny man. Uh, his name is Mr. Mike Rice. From Kilkenny. Yes. A Leinster man. I think you were probably the only second or third Leinster person we've had on the pocket. We've had we've had Fred Cook. Yeah. Emma H- Doran. Right. How did that go? Did it go all right? Or did, was there friction? No, no, it was all good now. We get on all right. Ker- uh, Fred is an adopted Munster man. Right. He's down in Kerry now. He is, yeah. They're living kind of a kind of a Which I was that lad's fella named Ling. Did you see that fella? Ling. He was on Twitter, big. I don't have Twitter. So. He was. Uh, I. I don't have it either. Um. I only heard on the grapevine. Uh, with lads, WhatsApp group, they set it up. But he's a lad with a big, a big beard and bushy hair. But he's raising the kind of the children, kind of like Mowgli in the Jungle Book, out in the <laughs> out in the West Ireland. I'm not even joking. Like he's like off the grid. Did they do like a documentary on him or something? He kind of been doing one on himself. He's yeah. kind of like. One of these lads, he's like, I'm off the grid, and I'm going to tell while, you about it. being on a phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like that, you know, the South Park episode about yeah. Harry and Meghan, when they're like, the world privacy, oh, shit, <laughs> the world privacy tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they were like going around, we're on the world privacy, we want that privacy. And it's like those people that go like, uh, we're against, uh, the government's trying to get rid of cash. Uh, they want us yeah. to pay by card. Uh, if you want to support us to get to keep cash, uh, donate to our PayPal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Like. Oh, yeah. So, Mike, you're a stand-up comic. You're based in London. Uh, yeah. You're London, and you're over and back a lot, though. Yeah, I am over and back a lot, yeah. When did you make the move over? Why did I? When? 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 Do you know what? I actually went over in March of 2020. and I Jesus had, Christ. Yeah, and I had, a, I had a girlfriend at the time. So I, I went over with her. You went over like the week before? I, I went over like 10 days. I remember as just as I was over there, the whole fucking thing started shutting down. There was no, the toilet rolls were not in, the Tesco's, everyone was going balubas. But Boris, at the time, was like, we will remain open or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. And I remember Irish schools were closed and the British schools were staying open. And uh, and I just moved in, which is actually a kind of odd fella from uh, Lisburn. So that's outside Belfast, this yeah. older guy. Yeah. Um, just a uh, random house share. Just a random house share, but he's an older guy, very, he's quite serious. And I remember I was reading a book at the time called IRA, Sinn Féin and the Provost. <laughs> and, uh, Great book to read in England. That's right. A great but gave me a lot of great ideas and especially and, if you're uh, living with a guy from Lisbon absolutely yeah <laughs> now he was I, I was telling him I was like well this is a great book and he's like I'm a Protestant and I was like it's a bad book it's a bad book <laughs> don't read it you painted your bedroom orange <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was living over there with him and then next thing I was with, the, I was with uh, a woman as well and then the whole thing collapsed and I says to her I ain't going to go home to my family farm there now because I'll, I'll have to have no way to make uh, money, you know. And uh, I said, but sure, you can come with me. And she says, oh, great. Is she English? Uh, huh? No, no, no. She's from, she's from Dublin. But I, I said, you come with me there now. And she said, oh, I will so. And then I was like, oh, I didn't really oh, mean it. that. You yeah. know what I mean? How long were you with her? Huh? How long were you with we her? We were only together about four months at that point. Are you, four months you were like, you were come to the family house. But I didn't really mean it. That was the thing. I was saying it as more of a gesture and obviously I thought she'd be like, no, obviously I won't do that. That'd be mad. But she was like, oh, brilliant. I will so. And uh, and so she did anyway. And everyone was come home, like all the brothers and all the... And uh, we wouldn't have been the most functional family at the best of times anyway. It's an Irish family. There's yeah, nothing functional no, about Irish no, family. Absolutely not. So it just, it, it all got fucking, uh, it all got kind of queer and strange and... Kind of queer. Huh? Queer. Queer. Queer, oh. not queer, queer. Queer, all right. Queer, which is, which is not really a reference to 
homosexuality more just strangeness yeah oh right okay do you know if someone called you now that has now queer hawk oh I know what you mean sorry yeah there's, you know, two, there's two ways of saying it well there's yeah. queer like which is uh, yeah obviously you're calling someone gay uh, or would have been in the past but now it's the cool world for yeah, gay yeah 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 like yeah, we're yeah. queer and yeah. we're own, they're owning it but back in the day we would have said queer yeah, yeah and it yeah. was not a positive bad word thing. yeah yeah it was a bad thing yeah, back yeah, then yeah. but you probably grew up with that as well like anything different or oh strange. yeah there was lots of different words um uh, yeah, the, but but now they've th- those words have moved in time. You know what I mean? They they come full circle and that's they right. Positive words. You yeah, know what I mean. Yeah. So that's a good one now. So, but the things kind of got queer and a bit fucking feraly and weird. Do you know? I I I started lo- I I was losing. I think I was losing my mind a little bit. Um, and I was kind of I half in, had in my head at one point that the, the girlfriend was going to have an affair with my father or something. Do you know what I mean? I just had this, <laughs> but I think I was just. I, Is your dad I, really good looking? No, he's old. He's an old boiled shite. Do you oh know what right. I mean? He's just an old. He's more misery than man. He's one of them. He's like an, a sad old John B. Keane play where everyone dies in the bog. Right. And that's okay. in, as a person. He just loves misery, sadness. His like philosophy on life is just like. He's just like. Life is. Hard and miserable wall to wall and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. die and sure you you might it's just all this song he sings. If you ask him how he is, it's just like, Oh sure, we're on the door of the poor house. The poor house doesn't exist. It's not yeah, even yeah. a place that exists anymore. It's negative, the, negative. It doesn't even cover it. He's like a black he's like a fucking you know, he's sucking planets into him. Just, so and you feel him before he gets there. And even when we were younger, because we were working on the farm. Big expectation for us to be farmers and stuff. And if you were ever just sitting in watching cartoons or anything, you know, in the living room, you're just here and you're just like, oh, fuck. He's coming in and he's just like, what are you doing in here? You know, because you're supposed to be out working. You're never, never are you supposed to be yeah. sitting down doing anything. So even when I hear it, I get But anxiety. that would drive you away from the farm, that sort of stuff. Oh, it? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because the more the, you start to resent it. But you're like fucking Angela's ashes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But there's no need. It's the 90s. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The Celtic Tiger's booming and we're living back in fucking... What are you, what are you doing on the farm? What, are you, what have you got? Milking Sheep, cows. Just, what else have you got? Just cows? Cows, cows, dairy. Dairy's just, where the money is. That's where the money is, is it? That's where the money is. Now, there was fuck all money when we were growing up because my father couldn't organise a fucking piss up in a brewery like he's just... Do you know what I mean? He, he he was he's just a slogger. He's a plotter. He just gets up. He does things. He he buys shit that we don't have money for. Like my mother is like a building a financial house of cards to make sure that we can go to college and this that and the other. She's a nurse working full time. Had to stay working full time because the farm was making fuck all money. And she's just carefully doing this. That, that, that. And next thing my father comes home, pff, new it. new tractor. Did we need a new tractor? F- fuck off. We oh, have okay. one. Like just. Doesn't tell anyone oh. that we're getting the new tractor and just puts us all... We didn't go on holiday. We used to have holidays. We only started going on holidays maybe when I was like 11 or 12. And we go down... This is a funny thing about my father. And he didn't even understand holidays. I didn't want... No hobbies. Wouldn't Not be able one. to relax, would he? Well, no, what he would do is... And this is what he said recently because my mother was like... She was like suggesting, would we all go for like... Uh, a holiday to like she's like Dungarvan or somewhere just a family and we can just have a thing by the beach and my father says oh sure we went on a few uh, them old yokes when we were uh, a few years ago and sure you wake up in the morning and you have the old bit of porridge you sit in the chair and you stare at the wall for a few hours and sure then what do you do exactly. you know so I, miserable. miserable so he used to leave our holidays Generally, after maybe he would just go, <laughs> he would just try to go home. He'd go home, yeah. But then you'd have a better holiday, would you? A far better holiday, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you would like, and even though, like, my father, he, if you met him now, he can be a charming man, he's a very funny man. Um, you know, everything is women's fault. Oh, that's classic. they've done most of the tr- most things, they had they're responsible, global warming, you know, everything, right? Yeah. But so, anyway, him and the the uh. The girlfriend. Uh, so you're in the house. No, you're all the family are back in the house. <laughs> They're all back. My brothers are back. How, I, many, right, how many? What's in your family? I, many tr- there's four of us. Four, three brothers. Three brothers, right? So there's four boys. Four boys. Wow. And uh, interesting because we're all kind of wired. Um, we're all. It's very interesting because it's a farming family. My my father is uh, like obviously a farmer. My mother's a nurse, and then I'm doing comedy. My youngest brother is an actor. And uh, my older brother, Paz, a social worker. And neither of us have the hands to wipe our arse. Like, we're, we're just impractical 
fairy people. But your parents, you know, when your dad finds out that you're a comedian and your other brother is an actor, he must fucking have gone mental. Well, the thing was, you're not a traditional family where yeah. it's get your job, get your house, get you safe. That's right. But now that if you're going off doing creative stuff like you yeah. do nowadays, yes. But all these new jobs, you know, yeah. like what do you do? Oh, I edit videos for Instagram. Like these are new That's jobs right. that have only been created. I paint like, you know? pigeons. Yeah, exactly. Like oh, what do you? Yeah. Know? I'm a brand ambassador for Nike. You're like, yeah. what? Where, where's the fucking painter? Where's I teach the fucking decorator? Words how to speak French? Or yeah, whatever. exactly. Yeah. Yes. So uh, <laughs> that's right. But my. Uh, so the thing is, and this is the interesting thing about it, and this is actually what allowed us to do what, uh, be as free as we were. Once the farm was getting taken over, once someone was taking over the farm, he has stated uh, many times his only role on earth, on this planet, is to keep my, my name and race in my native place. Now, when you say race, you're thinking, is this some sort of a, yeah. uh, you know, final solution kind of a statement? But it wasn't. It's just like, keep the land in the fucking family. So that your brother it. takes it, then you want his son to take it. He wants to basically all to but, stay. But, but it's, oh, but, and that is his reason to be on earth. Like, land is the number one most important thing. He would, so, the, right, so to explain, you know the film, uh, The Fields? Yes, a very old film. Yeah, John B. Keane. It's yeah. John B. Keane play, Centered around the guy, the Bull McCabe, who's who's rented this field, but he's he's fucking made this field because he's hauled seaweed from the fucking sea to slap in the field to grow it up out of rock and nothing. Now it's a great fucking field. It's, the field is for sale. He's had it for twenty years renting. He's made it. Of course he should buy it. A fucking yank yeah. comes in to buy the field with a bigger offer. Right now, uh, uh, the bull kills uh, the yank. Right. That's that's not yeah. sorry to spoil the field. That's what happens. Now, my father would see that as completely and utterly justified. He wouldn't see any... <laughs> he wouldn't see any drama in that. Just he, kill him. No, kill him. I have asked my father straight up, would you kill someone if they tried to take your land? He said I would. And I swear in my life, I absolutely believe he would kill really? anyone who tried to take... One hundred percent. But that's but for for people in the country, yeah, the land is is the street cred. It's the fucking power, isn't it? But it's it's it's, the, it's, it's truly a disease. It's, it's a yeah, curse like, of the mind. Where did he get that land from? So this is actually fucking interesting, right? Because there's a story. What happened was, the land was originally owned by a family called uh, the Heffernans, right? And his great 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 grandaunt, a lady named Kate Rice, ended up fucking marrying in to the farm, right? Right into Heffernan's farm. Six weeks later, Heffernan dies. Heffernan's dead. There is murmurs of foul play. Within a week, she has the brother moved in. Pat Rice, her brother. So basically, moved this, in. This lady, Miss Rice. Kate could, Rice. Kate Rice. Yeah. Could have done a bull McCabe. Well, this is the thing now. She, she did it in a more subtle way. Maybe but John B. Keane wrote that based on. I think, I, I think B. Keane was influenced. That's a conspiracy theory. There's certainly. But that's a conspiracy yeah. theory. So. so so it's not like this has always been in uh, the family. The family, but my father talks as if it's since so the Big is, Bang. He's, this this has come like, in since this has come in through a marriage. It's come in through a it came in through a marriage, but um, but the reality is, um, as the Bull McCabe says in uh, the field, he says God made the world, but the Bull, the Bull McCabe made this field. And my father would feel that way about the farm because he's brought the farm on because his father and this will actually this is an interesting thing about the comedy. So my father believes in breeding, right? Completely and utterly nature versus nurture, 120% nature. Nurture has absolutely nothing to do with it. If you put him as a baby in fucking Mumbai, he would have somehow found his way back to the land of Ireland right. and farmed. Nothing to do with the people sure. around you, your upbringing, it is genetics. And that's why when we came out as children, he did not believe he had to teach us one thing. Because it was in our name. Because it's in, I was just, we're going to come out welding, we're going to come out doing stuff. It was just going to be inherent flow like water. We were going to be able to farm, which of course, as you know, is fucking stupid. Oh, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But this is genuinely what he, he felt. So... Anyway, so he believes in this. It's breeding. And he believes everything that you are comes from your parents or somewhere else. That's why you are the way you are. It's come from it. And I says to him, well, how do you explain um, that John, my younger brother, is an actor now and I'm doing comedy? Well, he said, uh, your uh, grandfather 
your mother's father, he used to be in plays and stuff. That's where John gets the acting. And he said, and my father was in and out of the madhouse. He was mentally ill. Right. And that's where you get to comedy. <laughs> and he didn't... It's like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Absolutely, yeah. But he, he didn't... He, he wasn't... He jo- won't acknowledge it. Like, well, he but he wasn't him. joking about yeah. that. He was dead, dead, dead Has he serious. ever seen you live, your dad? Oh, Jesus. I tell you what now. Because that's the, hard going when the family come and see you, isn't and it? And this, this one hurts me now because he saw me once years ago when I was just hosting a show and he came in halfway through. I was just hosting and then he kind of just uh, left, right? And he tried to bring my mother once as well and she started crying. She didn't want to go. Like she was just like, I can't, I can't. Now, to be fair, I'm a servant to the devil up there. I'm a disgrace. Right. And yeah. what I say is not right or holy or, uh, yeah. you know, I'm a terrible... You're not wearing the right clothes. You're not representing the family right. No, I'm a terrible reflection on the family and everyone else. And even I have a whole side of the family who, like, were like, I didn't get invited to a wedding and everything, you know, like people would think of really? me. Really? Really, yeah, yeah. I would have been seen as a black sheep. Just because I'm, I'm fairly... I, like, some of my stuff can be just fairly filthy or whatever. Yeah. Um... But that's just, I was a huge Louis C.K. fan. There's nothing wrong with doing filthy no. comedy if you do it in a way that's, yeah. you know. I, took right, a shit, I was shitting, a, I was shitting. There's, there's a the right way to do there. it, though. Yeah, like, yeah. There's the right way to do it. I was pissing on people, Andrew. I was, yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was touching myself when you were, there. And, yeah. when you were, <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't right what I was doing up there and uh, the law got involved and. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, uh, I would just say I, uh, <laughs> I did some very bad things. <laughs> I'm not allowed in Waterford anymore no. and uh, No one wants to go fucking uh, there. No one wants to no. go fucking there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So what's your relationship like with your dad today? So it's kind of it's an interesting cause so he saw me so this is the oh, thing. Sorry, so yeah, he yeah. saw me at so this was the thing. He saw me at uh so at Christmas we were I, I was down at a I was at a wedding. I was at my cousin's uh wedding and uh and sure it was during the day, drinking away there like a little sucky calf. Me and a few of the cousins just. Mm, it's right. great the the, the yeah. country yeah the country lingo is fucking because I'm from the city just outside the city yeah yeah so I love hearing the country the southern like the the northern Irish countryside here is like yeah. get our fucking there yeah. like, whereas the the southern Irish country is, is yeah it's great to hear it again oh yeah we're uh, yeah we're, we're just the Ever, well the everything's sentences. infused with agriculture I had yeah. a great I had a great one there I was at a. So I was at an old uh, stag, right? And we were down in Cork and we were at this place called Secrets, a strip club in oh, Cork. Oh, Jesus, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Jesus, you know it, don't oh, you? I drove him past it. Should be shut down. Should be fucking shut, <laughs> should be down. shut down. I remember going in there once and it was an absolute disgrace the way the women were being treated. So I went in the following night again just to check. Yeah. To see if things had improved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's, but, that's not true, by the way. But, <laughs> that is not true, by the way. Within three nights in a row. This is joking. Just sat here. Um, but so anyway, we, uh, so we were down at the Oak and anyway, I was there with my brother's friends, my brother the farmer. So I was there with just like a load of like fucking diesel heads. Like. Are we talking jeans, brown shoes? Absolutely. The men are tucked into the belt. They're they are bullocks. Yeah. They're bull. They're well, well. What? You're over in London, are you? Yeah. Well, what's the crack over there? Crack over there. The money to be made in that is there. Is there? Yeah, comedy. Yeah. That's a hard old station, is it? Do you know Tommy Tiernan? Yeah. Do you know who I don't like? Yeah. Any, and they don't like anyone yeah. is the thing do you know your man what's your man what's your man's name what's the fella the I can't remember what his name is he's shite though yeah he's shite, shite though fucking shite he's though. shite terrible that's the first thing people say to you when you're a comedian yeah. they tell you who they don't like that's right I go, what the fuck what, what, what are you talking about well you're a comedian alright you know I saw that guy Michael McIntyre live yeah I didn't yeah. like him I go what the fuck has that got to do with me that's right yeah. Like I go up to a footballer you go, go, yeah. up, go up to Roy Keane and go hey Roy um, do you know what I was at AC Milan versus Inter Milan and the right back didn't think he played well <laughs> Fuck off! Yeah, yeah. So, wind it up. Yes, uh, yeah. We don't care. We don't care. All lads. we want to know is people of our level when they have bad gigs. That's all we want to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He had a tryout for the comedy store and he got booed. Oh, yeah, come on. Tell me more. Sorry, just let me. <laughs> you know, just yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're in Cork. So I'm down in Cork. We're, we're in Secret Centre. The boys like they come Can in. I ask you a question: What is that place like? Secrets. Yeah. I sure look, they, 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 you go in there and there's a want and a need on the people in our strip clubs in general. It, it drives me up the wall with anxiety. And are because the girls Irish? They're like, huh? Are the Irish girls? I didn't, I didn't talk to an Irish girl in there. All right. So, and even the ones, they're like, there's an American one there, but she lives in Limerick and then comes down to shake her ass oh, down does, in she Cork. Does, she's like a guard. She she do, does, she's like a guard. She wouldn't live amongst. She, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, don't, you don't live in the place where you work. No, so no, no. They're guards. They are guards, <laughs> and they, they are guards, and they're you know they they're similar like they're similar similar disposition. How are you? You know, oh, yeah. have you drink taken? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So uh, 
So there's American one. There's an old one now here now. And I tell you one thing. This this one, she's Slovakian. And lad, she must have been tipping 60. And she took a liking to me when I went in there. And she's rubbing up against me now like an old fucking heifer. And uh, and I said, I said she was like, and I like she's rubbing up against me like an old heifer, and I was like kind of hitting her away like she was. I was like, go out that, go on, go out that, suck, suck, go out now, you know, hitting her off. And she's come up to me and she's like, you'll buy me a drink, you'll buy me a drink. And I was like, listen now, come on. I was like, get real. Would you look at yourself now? No offense, but you're fucking, Did you're you fit for the right? home. I didn't, but I kind of was trying to. Like, Would you come on now? Don't piss in my pocket and tell me it's raining. Go out there now. I'm not having this. She just kept calling, just like relentless. But that's her job, Mike. I know, lad, but you got to be, you've got to finesse it. You've oh, got right, to, she was too. She was just straight up fucking, you know, kind of. She's in the game a long time. She knows the bullets, like. She does, but she's learned nothing. She's yeah. learned nothing in her time. It's like an open spot going 20 years. Absolutely. 20 years and just somehow. <laughs> the same joke. It's all just, every lesson has flew a mile over her fucking head. And uh, so she's just, and I'm like, well, yeah, go away. But eventually I just, I just get, gave in. She was telling me about her job down in fucking, she's were also working in Lidl. She's at the cash register down there. I said, like, oh, sure, fuck, what do you want to drink? She's like, triple martini thing. How much is that? Her, give her, give her the fucking drink. Give her the fuck, you know, <laughs> get away from me now. I've paid for it, you know. Good luck. I think that's her tactic is because they get a little bit of commission if they if they get you to buy yeah, drink. to drink something the bar. So I think her tactic is to be so insufferable that you will pay for her to, to go away. Off. And it's a different way to come at it. You know what yeah, I mean? At fair the enough, thing. Yeah. So fair enough. But anyway, the boys, so one of the lads, now the lads are, the, a few of them are married and different things and, and they're agricultural lads. So I hate that these women are like just kind of on me. The lads are loving that aspect of it. That these women are obliged to chat to them, and the boys are taking full. Jesus, this one, yeah, she kind of fond of. She's fond of old Mick. Yeah. Mick here is she? She likes to fucking. They fall in love with her then. That's don't right. They? Like yeah. Oh, and lad, they they all got taken to the fucking cleaners. I'm talking cleaners. I'm talking thousand. I'm talking, you know, because they so they stayed. We got your one to do this whole. It's some little. It's a humiliating little fucking endeavor. Anyway, we have to get my brother down. The whole thing is we we get him down. So it's your brother stag. Yeah. So we get him down in a room and they're you know they're riding him like a dog and whipping him with the belt and this is a man. He's he's a great piano player. He's you know he's a he's achieved things. He's, he's a he's father on, of seven. Father of seven. He's he on runs all, a, he has he owns a land. Yeah, he, he owns land. He's inheriting land. He's on all fours. He's barking oh, like a dog. Christ. It's it's it. To be honest, I don't know who it's for that we're doing it, but it's just it's the stag. We're doing it. It's a whole rigmarole. But so. One of the lads, anyway, there's a, there's a, one of the women, she has three children, which are in Birmingham, and one of the lads now thinks she's the bee's knees. So anyway, he's giving her the fucking keys to the castle, he's promising her he's, he's going to leave the wife, he's going to, you know, it's, it's <laughs> just, leave he's leaving the wife, the whole, okay, you can. I've got a mortgage on 2%, yeah. I can remortgage it, like, yeah. can and then I'll the, fly your family yeah. over. <laughs> and he goes to one of the lads, the other little lad, 22 year old fella, but just an old, one of these real old 22 year old, like. Lads, and I said to him, Jesus, I said, your man is mad for your one and she, three kids, and I asked her, that's how he likes them, calf at foot. <laughs> <laughs> calf at foot. <laughs> calf at foot. <laughs> one of the best that's things ever. Great and then he had another one, sure, I was like, I says to him, and your man, and I was like, and fucking George is down there with another one. He, oh, Jesus, he said, Jesus, flat out like a badger on the bypass. <laughs> <laughs> Badger on the bypass. Badger, like that's flat a, out like a badger that's a, on the that's bypass. A, that is a brilliant phrase. It's just brilliant. But like them lads, the country lads, it just com, comes out of them like yeah. water. Great way with words. Oh, it's, great way with it's words. It's unbelievable. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I um, I've, I love it when I hear those kind of the Irish sayings, you know, like yeah. the Irish phrases and stuff yeah. like that, especially from the countryside. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because there's great creativity in it. It's, 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 I, I'm in love with it. It like gives me like, as I heard Blind Boy coined the term for like a mind horn. It gives me like a mind horn. Like yeah. I just, I love, it's like chocolate in my ears. Yeah, like. yeah. But my father, and speaking of phrases, I mean, and my father is afraid for everything. Like, but his phrases are mostly to put you down. Like they're negative ones, yeah, like yeah, about yeah. how lazy you are. So I'd be like, Jesus, sure, if there was work in the bed, you'd sleep on the floor. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. everything is about you being yeah. lazy or tight. Yeah, lazy or tight. Ah, you're as tight as two coats of paint. Sure, look at the fucking. Ah, sure, that lad he'd fucking peel an orange in his pocket. 
<laughs> there's another you know, one. There's another one brilliant. about fingers, isn't there? There's something about four fingers or three fingers. I can't remember. Yeah. But uh, can I go back to you there? Yeah. That was, um, you're back in the pandemic in, oh, in so the, with the girlfriend. I'm speaking of phrases now on this one. Right. So this is, and her and my father start getting on really well, but in this weird, like, non-verbal. He loves treats now. Treats. Treats. Sweets and stuff. Sweets, chocolate, Chips. ice cream, cans of Coke. Is he diabetic? He's not long for this world and he's had trouble with his stomach. He has actually had like to go in. But there was one time, so he had to go in, he had gallstones and all this stuff because he just loves and he loves chips. And he doesn't really drink, right? So he's not a big drinker. That's his vice. That's the is, Irish diet though, isn't it? Yeah. So just chips and battered sausages and everything. And at one stage he went into the hospital and he got told, look, if you keep eating this stuff now at the minute, you're on a certain medication, you're going to be, you're going to have, you'll be rushed to hospital. Like you can't do it. Oh, right, so sure, I suppose I'll just, you know, sure eat a water and bread like my yeah. ancestors. Are. Right. Anyway, my brother James is going in for a takeaway there one day. And uh, the ass says, will you get me an old cotton chips there? Yeah. And James says, no, sure, you can't have that. Oh, no, they told me I can now, I can. You know, anyway, James goes in, gets some fish and chips, eats halfway through the fish and chips, eats them <coughs> straight into any. Just had to be brought in to the emergency room. He, and he knew he was going to be brought into the emergency room and just gets brought in. And he's <laughs> he's down on the hook. I do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. But it just, you know, just the the the, 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 the consequence of the decision yeah. and the actions just doesn't see it. They don't see it. There's it, it, a cloud in front of no, him. No, there's a cloud in front of him. Um, but anyway, so your one is back and she's, they have this thing with treats him and her and so she's giving him treats but it kind of got to this weird like non-verbal stage where she'd be like kind of like she'd shake kind of these biscuits at him and he'd start rubbing his belly and it was got all weird it got queer it was just kind of it yeah, got yeah. queer and a bit I was kind of like would you fucking stay away from him I didn't like it I just didn't like it I swear to god I was like the f- I, it, it, it creeped me out right I was a bit so how right. long was she living with you before you decided to bin this off or she uh, broke it off or five, it, was five, it was five months but at the height of that came with uh, your man and your one one time he comes down and this is the Irish phrases as well he came down he got dressed up to go to my uh, brother's for uh, just dinner or something uh, and we were all going to my brother's who lived across the road and he got dressed up well and she goes oh you're looking well she said to him and he turned to her and he said he said uh, well he said the, the older the flute the sweeter the tune the older the flute the sweeter the, sweeter the, the tune now that sounds like a nice old Irish phrase but it sounds like he was saying, Innuendo. my cock has gotten better with age, that I have a lovely old cock. What um, way would you take that now? I'd call the guards. <laughs> <laughs> I'd call the guards. And I'd, tell, I'd ring every pharmacy and tell to see if there's any Viagra being sold to my father in the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have done. I, I, I ju- I, the, the idea... Viagra, I, the idea of Viagra, no problem. It's great. Get everyone having... But like... It's scary. It does scare me with my father. He's a horny man. Like, And can I ask you a question? Yeah. When you finished with the girl, how did it end? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah. Well, so I left. I, I, I moved to Barcelona. I thought it was, I left. I went into the front room. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's because you're all living in the house. Yeah. So you just fucked off to Barcelona. <laughs> and she's still living there. No, 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 no. So um, uh, <laughs> I left. Yeah, I, I drowned myself in the slurry pit. Um, no, I, um, yeah, I went to Barcelona well, she went. She went first. She was just. She was going for a month to France to write. She was a writer, and um, and I was like, I'm moving. To, I just. I was like, I'm moving to Barcelona. She's like, Well, what am I going to do? And I was kind of like, Did You fucking well, stay in France. Yeah, stay in France. There. Well, in my head, I was like, Do you know you can come as well? But it was kind of on the rocks at that stage. In my mind, I had kind of made up my mind that no love there. Like, well, no, no, there's love there. I know I did. I did, and I, I was, and still to this day, uh, like I'm friends with her, and we had a great time for sure. We'd been friends before. But so there was love there, but the there's lust and this. The pandemic does that to people, look, because yeah. you're in crisis. And we're just right yeah. on top of each other. But there was just what it was is there's irreconcilable, it's like divorce talk, but there's just irreconcilable differences that was like this. She slept with your dad, and I can understand that. She sucked my father off, <laughs> and she said, You know what? I got it wrong. The older the flute, the worse the flute. <laughs> you know? But she said, I had to, you know, yeah, the proof's yeah. in the pudding. The pudding's on that the floor. That was a joke, by the way. Can we just say that that did not happen? It, 
That didn't you never happen. know what people on the fucking internet. Like. You don't know what these lads. You know. They'll take it. So they'll run with it. They'll write a book. And I moved to ba- I moved to Barcelona then, and uh, yeah, I went I went out there. Uh, a great move. It was the best move I ever made. Really? Oh, on your own? On my own, yeah. But I knew some people out there because I'd gigged out there before, and there were shows still going on. In Barcelona right. at I, the time. So you wake up one morning and you're like, fuck this, I want to get out of here. Where are you in COVID at this point in Ireland now? I, I mean, the summer. So this was, about, this was about June, right? And I said to myself, I need fucking out of here now because this is driving me nuts. I wasn't getting on with one of my brothers as well. Um, another brother was there. There was a tension in the house. I had this one who was trying to finger my father and I was like, <laughs> this is, I'm just, I don't want any more of it. I'm on edge. This is Where do I go? Nightmare for all sides. I need Spanish people. Catalonia. I go over to free the Catalonians right. to fuck on a on a mission of independence. So I uh, so anyway, I uh, I say I'm going to go over. So I just say I'm just going to do the fucking TEFL, learn how to teach English, go over there, get a job. There's gigs going on over there. Yeah, they're still walking around the Spanish. They don't care for the old. Yeah. they're not like Irish. So they're in bed between twelve and three. They're in bed most of the day, lad. Yeah. You go over there. That's mostly what life is over there. A lot of they're, they're snoozy Susies. So I says, I'm going to go over there, teach English, gig, have a good time. I do that, go over. But then it, 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 uh, my girlfriend at that time, she, she comes as well then. But we're not together. She just comes and lives outside Barcelona, which was like... Did a head fuck? It was a complete head fuck. Because then I felt very responsible that she was there. But we were broken up. But sure then I would, I'd, you know, sure I'd travel out occasionally and we'd have a ride and stuff. And we were still kind of, you know, I still very much cared about her and stuff. Um, and vice versa. So it was, it, it was difficult in that sense, right? Mm. Not to bring this comedy podcast yeah, into an okay. emotional no, place. It's great, it's great. So, so you're in Barcelona, yeah. you're teaching English mm. as a foreign language. Yeah. Full time or online or on Zoom? No, or I in, it, was in, it was in person. So full time, nine to five? Um, not really nine to five, it was kind of stupid hours. Like, because it was like, um, you know, it, it's, it's like for richer people that can afford it there. So you're just... So did you have a good life out there? Oh, yeah. How long were you out there for? I loved it. I lived with a fellow named Maxi now, an Argentinian lad. Didn't believe in coronavirus, didn't believe it exists, wouldn't wear a mask. The, is the fucking... It was, uh, you know, 5G in our brains. Doesn't believe anybody's... Oh, conspiracy. Absolutely. Loved them. Loved huh? them. I loved them. Oh. Best I, people ever. I, Hilarious. I, and I remember one time, because I was... I, and he was just a complete hippie, right? Just, you know, did, work in the bed, Maxi on the floor. Mm. Right. Not doing it. Right. So, uh, but he had this daughter, this young daughter, Lua. Now, he wasn't with the mother. Um, do you know what I mean? That's not, <laughs> that wouldn't be the life for Maxi. Yeah. Um, responsibility. Responsibility. But he loved it. Daughter. He was a great father. He'd come over, he'd be colouring with the fucking, with the daughter and everything. Sure, because he's on mushrooms and everything else. So he's, you know, <laughs> he's off. Having the, I'm not even joking. Having the time of his life, he's fucking out of it. He's Lucy in the sky with diamonds, you know. He's off and away, so he's there colouring with her. He's like, Mike, come on. He's doing little dances all the time. He's up, he's having a, a, a great fucking time. And uh, and then he used to play this game with the daughter. And this, I thought this was like very sweet because they didn't have a pot to piss in. Yeah. So he couldn't be bringing her to the cinema or anything. So what he'd do is he'd get the empty bottles of beer that he was after drinking. And he'd bring her down to the, to the bins. Now, some people would be brought to the playground or the cinema or whatever else. His daughter got brought to the bins. So... He bring her down to the bins, and what they do is they play a game where they would throw the bottles into the into the fucking bottle bank part, and any one you smash, that's one point. And then so it's like because you're you're just trying, but it's hard because it's like this little hole, so a you little hole, yeah, really yeah, wristy, yeah. like fucking, and yeah. try to smash it. And the young one loved this game; they just be there smashing bottles Jesus. in the bin, like a pair of window lickers, and they just ah, and they absolutely happy as pigs and shit. And I came down and played with them a few times. It's great. It's a great. Great game. Just smashing bottles in the bin. Lads, you don't need money. You don't need Anton. You need a bin. You need bottles. And you're going to be a happy person, right? Do you know what? If I ever have kids and they go, can I have a PlayStation? You're coming to the fucking Tesco recycling <laughs> centre and we're throwing fucking bottles at a bin because if it works in Spain, it's going to work for you. Now yeah. shut up. You're lucky you're fucking born. You're lucky you're born. Yeah. You throw a bottle that's in a bin, mental. you'll be happy. Yeah. So you're happy out. That's, that's and good. I'm just part of the family, kind of. Because you're paying rent. Yeah. And he wants the money off you. Well, you you had to put it in a very transactional manner there, but we 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 we, we also loved each other and were, <laughs> you know, were, were companions. Yes, but of course there I was just, a financial and, element. And how long did you live out there for? Well, so I lived with Maxi there for about five months. It kind of got soured in the end with Maxi because 
Um, it always does those things, it though, does. doesn't it? It just does because after a while he was just, you know, he because he did have his family and he had his daughter and then he had an older son who come over and then I was just kind of mincing around there. And after a while, I, I, I've lived with people who I, I really like and I really like again and I just, and I begin to, I, I begin to, to hate them. But he did, I remember one time, because I was going through this breakup and it went on for ages to break yeah. up because it was over COVID and everything. I remember one time I was in my room and I was, I was sobbing. I, I put in a very like, like soap opera, hysterical, you know. Do you know like, what? Really, I like, think for you there, yeah. If you're ever feeling down, do you know what I think you should do? Go and throw bottles in a... In throw a, in bottles in a, in a bin? In a recycling bin. That'll just cheer you up. That'll just... Away, like, just <laughs> yeah, one smashes you know, and you're like... I want to kill myself. Give yeah. me a bottle. Get me a fucking bottle! Get him a bottle, get him a bin. <laughs> leave so you're, to you're sobbing. So I'm just... <laughs> you know, but like really like demonstrative... I think I probably wanted someone to hear me. Like, and so yeah. anyway, next thing I hear is a little knocky. Like, Mikey, Mikey. And I just go, <laughs> he's like, everything okay, Maggie? I can't even, don't know how yeah. it sounds, but everything okay, Maggie? I says, <laughs> life is hard, Maxie. <laughs> <Next thing. laughs> and Maxie, uh, so he knocks on the door, he opens the door, he comes in anyway, he goes, ah, this, you talk this about the girl, this girl. You know, and I was like, yeah, he's like, oh, Mikey, he says, I have this before, it's hard, it's hard. <laughs> They break the heart, they break the heart, they go, they go. Oh, it's so hard. But you know, this is the life, this is the life, this is the life, this is the life, this is the life. You find new girl, you dance, you have fun, you fuck, you go again. And then you start thinking, oh, but then you go again. And then he's like, you want some, you want some of these? Yeah, like mushrooms. Maxie. He's trying to get you to do something. Yeah, he's trying to get me to do something. Come with me, come with me. Yeah. I'll show you happiness. That's right. Yeah. But I always remember that friend, this is the life, this is the life. This is the life. And he's smiling from here. Do you know what? Like, you should, that's what you call an Edinburgh show. This is the life. This is the life. That's a great name for an yeah, Edinburgh Yeah, it would, isn't it? That would be yeah. great. Tell me, you stayed there for five months. No, I, no stayed, so I ended up staying there for a full year. Full year. Yeah. And when you were working and you're going out at the weekends having the crack, the beers, and did you, yeah. did you like the Spanish people, the Barcelonian people, the culture of it? I love it. It's, it's like, you get 170. Now, not to bring things back to money, but like, you sit in a cafe and you get croissant coffee. 170 Jesus. you're sitting outside 170 euro it's fucking you walk outside your door and you're happy because it's aesthetically beautiful the people look good the buildings look good. the history look amazing the sun is shining and you are just like grateful in your soul jesus i can't believe i'm living here yeah this is great i used to the second place i lived i used to have a a, a rooftop to myself and I'd sit out there and I'd do a fucking... Yo, I got into it. I was in a stage at one time. I was in a bad place. I remember I was into... Did you ever get into like um, stupid self help stuff? And believe it. Oh, some self-help books. Yeah, I've read. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, now, this is a bit that I actually do in my current show about the self-help books where yeah. I think, personally, I think some self-help is actually can help you a little bit. Yeah. But I think a lot of it is such bullshit that actually probably just preys on vulnerable people really and tells and them like you need to buy the next book yes. to get the actual answer. Right. And it just fucking yeah. like, like there's a there's a guy in England, uh, he's written four books on confidence. I'm like, what happened to the first one should have been <laughs> fine like the first one should have done it like yeah like yeah. you know what I mean the first uh, yeah. yeah like the, why, are you, why are you writing four books on it but also the first book was complete that should have you should have had enough confidence with the first book that's right but also the, the, a major thing and I think this is the thing about self help that um, people uh, miss and I did myself for a long time and I'm a big I'm a sucker for a lot of things that yeah. I used to talk to a stone but um, oh, Jesus Christ no genuinely for a few years I, I would talk with a stone I'll tell you about for that for energy and all that kind of stuff yeah so. yeah yeah you're into Reiki and genuinely all that kind of, one into of Reiki my, and stuff. I have a cousin who's into who's into Reiki and I do believe her to be kind of a wizardess I do believe she has some sort yeah. of a connection with the, with the moon I don't think you'd have done well on the farm I was struggling. <laughs> I was struggling. Yeah. I didn't have... As this I, cow was giving me bad energy yeah. here. <laughs> That's right. I tell you something. If there was work in the bed, it'd be on there, the floor. There, <laughs> there was one time I think I made a cow... Calm. I'm not going to go into that. But okay, I just, that's, the, that's for the Patreon. That's, that's for the Patreon. But I genuinely, there was a day where I was almost certain. <laughs> what the fuck is going on in this know, podcast? What the <laughs> fuck is lad, going lad, on? Lad, lad, I have never lad. had a guest like no, Mike Rice no, before. No, no, who I've no. sat on a podcast and all yeah. I hear is, I tell you, yeah. he's, she's fucking wanking me dad off. And I fucking, there's fucking energy coming off a stone. And I'm fucking, it's, there's, this is the life. This is the life. This is the life. What the fuck? It's all It's all a blur. Can you just stay here permanently? It, it's all a blur. I don't really know what happened. It's it's uh, it's up and down. Life's a circus. But 
Uh, oh yeah, well no, I was telling you when I was on the roof because I got into Tony Robbins. Do you ever, do you ever come across Tony? Oh, don't even start. I know, yeah, but he, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how he claps. He's autistic. Yeah, is he, he uh, autistic? No, I have no oh, idea. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> you think yeah. autistic people Brilliant. clap like that? Like. Do you know what? And I'm probably getting them mixed up with a different kind of disability there, but I'm not going to go into that any further. Um, uh, I don't want to scandalise the people of this podcast, but I feel I might have already. Um, but just wash out your ears and uh, and say Hail Mary after this one. But So I was up on the top. And did you ever hear this thing called a power stance? No. Right. So this is a thing. Now, I'll just demonstrate here. So if you're feeling now sad or bad or you're okay. thinking about your family situation right. or whatever else, right, what you do is you get up, right, and uh, <clears throat> and you do this. Uh, like you're super... This Conor motion. McGregor does that. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so Hands you, on your waist and your yeah, chest out. Yes, and you are Superman. You are a superhero. And you hold this for a minute. And Tony says, you, you'll feel self-conscious. You will, and you'll feel, Andrew, I'm an idiot. But you, oh, you hold through that. And suddenly you feel all the power of colonialism and capitalism and the conquering of native people come up through you. You are Columbus. And you look out over, you know, uh, this thing and you're, ah, and you're full of jizz. And then you, uh, you know, <laughs> and then you turn around and you, just decimate a small village and you know and it's and were you were you doing so i was up on day? the roof doing that i'd be up on the roof doing that in uh in barcelona but one morning i i was up and i was doing it and i was kind of i would say vulnerable in terms of my self-esteem and different things like that at the time so i was trying to i was looking for things You're tricks for an answer i was looking for tricks to get yeah. me out of it sometimes you look yeah. for tricks or magic yeah, like, like they're looking for an answer. They're looking for a light. Yeah. Like some people, like, for example, like, can, you know, they can turn to fitness. They can turn to, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> fucking, you know, they can turn to like joining a group or yes, something like that. That's right. You know, uh, we're comedians. We're very, is- we're very isolated people anyway. Like, you know what I yes. mean? Like, so We're queer yeah. it, by nature. Yeah, yeah. Queer and kind of feral and, um, and ultimately not really well, a lot of us. But so, anyway, I'm out doing that. But I looked across and there was an outlet drinking a coffee. Uh, just out on his thing like just an old like Spanish man kind of cool man he was having a cigarette and he just looked over at me and he didn't it was tan but didn't look unlike my father and he saw <laughs> and he saw what I was doing and he just so just put his eyes up with that and just went like that like, like just fucking weirdo and, yeah and I just you felt sh- did you feel it I just completely you felt it though and I never did it I never did that so again so you felt his reaction I just like- felt absolute you're the biggest Egypt, inconsequential Egypt. What the fuck are you doing up there in the top of the room? And just, but it was so dismissive. It wasn't even like, ha it was just like, like, you know, and he was back to thinking, he was obviously thinking in Spanish, I'd imagine, but yeah. whatever it is, it, he was thinking, and that was it. I was out, but I did that, I did that stuff, but then I, and I had a stone, I had a gratitude stone that I would talk to. So I would talk to this stone all the time yeah. because my friend, uh, was on uh, Dancing with the Stars, the Irish version, and he won it with Mairead Farrell. Which one is he? Ha! Huh? Johnny Ed Nolan is his name. John Edward Nolan. So he won the thing with Mairead Farrell. And so I said, Jesus, if you could ride that donkey to the Kentucky Derby. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But he won it. And I said, Jesus, how the fuck did you win that? I says to him. And he says, I, was, I had this. I had this stone, he says, that I, was, I would be talking to the stone and thanking it. Uh, for things so he'd be like say now he was coming out he'd be like thanks for me and Mairead winning the dance and then he'd go down and then he'd go out and win it but he'd be, be thanking it for things he wants in the future and it was this whole thing with a stone like a law of attraction yes exactly so he says I says what should I do he says well first is first go find yourself a stone so I went down to St. Stephen's Green in Dublin <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> and I went around and I was looking. And I was like, I need a, a good stone. So there were some stones. I was like, I'm not fucking having you, you stupid cunt. <laughs> shit stone. <laughs> you're going to give me negative shit. You're going to give me negative shit. And I found one little good looking stone. I said, be Jesus, I'll, <laughs> I'll take you at home with me. So I took this, a stone home with me. But so anyway, we talked to a stone all the time. Uh, but I ended up, I ended up having a panic attack over it because I went, I was down in the wonky donkey in Cork one time. And what I would do is I'd thank the stone before I'd go on stage. I'd be like, oh, thank you for the gig going well. And then I'd come off and I'd be like, thank you, stone. It worked. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, I, I, you know, I was, I was off. I was away with the fairies. Sure, look, I'm, I'm, How long did this last? Huh? How long so this? I was doing this, I was probably, I sometimes say two years, probably more like a year maybe. I, I was in cahoots with the stone. But, um, <laughs> uh, but 
Anyways, I'm busy with a stone. No, no, I'm what? not, I'm not uh, laughing no, at you. It's just the madness well, of the situation. Are, you are, you like, are. A st- like a stone. Like you a, are. I know. Talking to a stone. And like. a stone, like, literally famous for having no emotional intelligence whatsoever. Like, you know, someone say you're as dumb as a stone, you've got the heart of a stone. It's not a good thing yeah. to have that be said. So the stone was obviously, I'm talking to sure the stone is like, I oh, can't do any of this. But anyway, the, the, sure the stone doesn't know what's going on. But so, uh, but one day in the wonky donkey, I go down to the wonky donkey to do a gig. And anyway, I'm going to go on. Uh, it's when Mike Morgan and Ross Brown were yeah, running yeah, at yeah, one yeah. stage. And uh, I go to go on. I can't find the stone. And lad, I had a panic. I was like, I can't. I didn't want to go on. I didn't. I was like, I was searching everywhere. And then I went around. I swear to God, went out the streets to try to <laughs> look for a new stone. Like, I was like, I need a new stone. Like, I can't go on. I was up and down the streets looking for this new stone. I was like, I can't, if I haven't spoken to the stone, how will I, the gig is not going to be worth, uh, you know. And that was when I realized, I was like, after that gig, because I went on then, and the gig went, it went, only went all right, you know. And, uh, but throughout the whole gig, I was thinking, where have yeah, I... Yeah, it's like being away from your phone, isn't right. it? Right, like yes. Like. And I was like, where, what has become of the stone? Has it been kidnapped? Has there, I didn't like... So, but when I came off then, that was when I realised, I was like, I have, a, I have made myself into a window licker. I have created myself into being an absolute imbecile with this stone. <laughs> like, I've created this yeah. world of dependence on a stone, Andrew. And uh, and then I had to wean myself off it and be like, and like, I and can't. Did you just go to small stone, small stone until you wean yourself off it? You just <laughs> like, okay, no, no. You know the way, like, when you're giving up the fags, you go from 20 to 10 to 5 to 2 a day, like, you know? Yeah. Like little Russian dolls yeah, just popping yeah, out, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, but how was that like? You have, did you just wake up and go, like, fuck it, I'm out of this bubble now? Kind yeah, of well, like. after that, because then I was like, I realised. But see, I'd been kind of engaging in which you can do kind of magical thinking and universe, like of the universe and everything. And I would start, I was already starting to see like everything as a sign, you know? Um, like I remember one time I was going out with a girl and we had a picture, there was a, there was a framed picture of us and the picture had been knocked over. And I goes, oh no. It's a bad sign for the relationship. No, I was like, oh, it is falling apart, isn't it? It has fallen down. It has gone. Like I, that's how, that's how I started to think. So I, I, I just kind of, taught myself into being an absolute moron uh <laughs> i'm not joking i just I, wow. yeah yeah so i just kind of caught myself and was like you have to, and i had to consciously be like you have to stop thinking this way because it's apps it's insanity you've you, you've yeah. you've read these books because one of the books the stone book is called the magic is the name of the book and it's just, it's, I mean, they, they, you know, only, you know, uh, it, it, like when they say only Englishmen and dogs go out in the midday sun, it's like, oh, that's only mad people. It can't come from this kind of book and this thinking. It just creates this yeah. kind of a mania. Well, you're saying it all as if you have the fucking, the answers to Christ over there. I don't know. I'm just like, just baffled by it. Like, like fucking. Well, you're a very that, practical man, you well, see. Well, how, how, no, but just, I'm just baffled, like, you know, how a stone can be, have such a hold over you. Like, you know what I mean? It was a lovely stone, though. It was like, there was, it was so smooth and, yeah, did you ever, it fit up your arse. Uh, so did, did you, <laughs> you could put it right up there. Oh, I'm ashamed to say. This is the life. This is the life. <laughs> this, this is, is the, the life. life. <laughs> this is the life. Uh, I just find it fucking, like, listen, yeah. it, you obviously went, but you, but when you look back on that part of your life now, do you yeah. look back and you kind of go, I'm happy I went through that, I'm happy I learned from that, or do you think to yourself, what was I fucking thinking? No, I... What way I, do you look at it then? Oh, just like, it's, it's the same way as I look at like, the stuff with my father, the growing up, the, the chaos yeah. of growing up the way I did. And and you know yourself, coming from a chaotic family. Like, but I look back at it now, and I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of happy, because I think if I was in any other field... I'd be so worried and depressed and all these things about stuff. But because we're comedians, yeah. it's like, this is ideal it was so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, this ideal that I was such a fucking great idiot. freedom in the comedy oh, as well. Like, it's amazing because you, know? yeah. you can own it all yeah. and you can tell the stories like, and be like... like you telling me now, I'm, in the back of my head, I'm thinking like, there's a fucking documentary or something here. Yeah. Because that, I look at it from the comedian's point of view. Whereas if I was an accountant and you yeah. were telling me this, I'd be like, listen, I know a girl who's a therapist <laughs> who can actually talk to you about your demons. Whereas uh, if you're a comedian, you're like... Oh. You need to write this yeah. shit down, man. Like, this is going to be really that's, funny. That's the name of the show. That's the name of the show. Of the show. Whereas, yeah, yeah. whereas somebody who's not in our world. So, like, when I'm listening, I'm just, like, just to hear it is brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's interesting. It's brilliant. Yeah. But it's from, from my point of view, I'm like, fuck, that's just mental. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? That's right. But it also, 
being a comedian to me it's just a bit like yeah but that's what comedians do yeah like we we get trapped in these little worlds and we have to find our way in and our way out and we panic about things that we don't need to panic about yes we get upset we have difficult relationships we're trying to deal with stuff like I just fucking left Ireland when I was 20, 22 and I've only just moved back recently well I've say moved to the north but I'm not, I, I've lived outside of Cork more than I've ever lived in Cork yes and I'm like going, how the fuck did this happen yeah I'm from Cork, like because you're high. I, do you know what? And you I read, what I, mean? I read a book about this. It's kind of, it's a bit of a depressing realization, to be honest. But because I think, and this is every human being, we all yeah. have the, we are all under the illusion. But one thing that would there is a self, and there is that we're all special, and that we're, you know, and we're all the hero in our own journey, well, yeah, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. star of our own film, and everything. Yeah. And we kind of think the way we are is our personality is a certain. You know, that's Mike and that's me. But really, we're just a specific model of ape. And so me and you are probably uh, like from where we're from and everything. Like we're just high in the traits of like openness and neuroticism and these different traits that we're high in and we're low in maybe. Well, and depending because we're all different, but like uh, conscientiousness, I think you're high in that. But like um, uh, I see what you mean. People are fear of aversion. So there are just types of people. People, yeah. And Different parts of your brain are working. Right. Like, so you're you know, not afraid of new things, no. right? Not at all. And, and you like Within it. Within reason. You, like. Within reason, yeah. right. But you fucked off to London when you were 22. A lot of people are afraid, would be afraid. It, it takes balls to do comedy, to pursue comedy, being where... Uh, in uh, a country you're not from. Right, yes. And uh, did you know anyone in your whole life, in your whole life circle of family, of everything, that was a comedian, that had no. ever done it? No. So, like, for you to go and do that is you're like you're Columbus off across the Atlantic you you don't even know if there's a fucking piece of land over there yeah "Ah, we're going yeah right but that's a personality type that's just uh, someone who who wants new things and is not afraid of new things and is is an open personality type but then we will then like take credit for that in a way because we'll be like I'm actually very open minded and I'm this and that and the other um but it's like, well, no, you're just this particular model of ape. And then there's the, the person who doesn't leave the hometown, gets married at 24 and does all the things. And we, as because we're a particular type of ape, so yeah. we'll look at them and we'll say, ah, what they're doing is wrong. And they'll look at us and they say, well, what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. But need, none of us deserve any credit or any blame for any of it. We're just actually... just who, Yeah, we're just we're just finding out what suits us. And yeah, suits that's just what suits our yeah. fucking... But makeup. also, like, you know, I know people like yourself from the village, from the town. Yeah. Whatever, who, you know, went to school there, you know, went to college, got a job in the town. Best friends, their cousin, you know, yeah. they go to the same, they get the same six weddings in the same six church in the same six hotels. Yeah. Every day is very similar. Yes. Very similar. That's right. But for them, they love that. They, they love, love the routine. And you know what? Yeah. Like, like, we need people like that. Like, we, we need mm-hmm. people like that. We need people who... Who who will will how would you say what's the best way? We need people who will like uh, you know, they're no risk. Yeah, they're nice people, good, hard working, decent people. Great people. Do you know what I mean? Whereas someone like me, I'd be like, I'm only fucking two bad gigs away from the door. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only I'm only one fucking clip yeah. gone viral when I say the wrong thing. Yeah, gone. That's right. You know what I mean? It's over. I'm on a I'm on a fucking. I'm on the fucking edge here. Where yeah. These people are nice in the middle. That's right. If something goes wrong, they still have enough to play with. Yeah. If they lose the house, they move into the mothers. You know what I mean? If they, yeah. if they lose the job, it's all right. The family are living around them, so they'll pay the mortgage for a bit. You're on a tightrope. You're, you're a trapeze artist. Whereas I'm like, if you're I, a clown. If I, if I make one mistake, yeah. if I make one mistake, Neck we're all broken. fucked. Yeah. Like, I let, and if I'm going down, I'm taking this fucking town with me. This town is going down <laughs> as well. You're bringing <laughs> Belfast down with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Rice, that's been an hour. Oh, that been, get the fuck out. It's about been an hour, yeah. No I, way. I actually need to get you back. Holy God. Can I just What's say, I feel, I feel like I've I've had some awakening. You've been awakened. I just feel like... Into the land of I'm lunacy. I'm going out now to look for a stone. <laughs> <laughs> a big fucking stone. Mike, you're in Belfast performing at the moment. Yes, yeah, so I mean... You, no, can I just ask, I always say this to people before we finish up, but yeah. I just want to ask you this. Obviously, being from the South, growing yes. up in the core, growing up and stuff like that, what has your relationship been? What were your thought processes like? Did it ever come into your head? What have, like? What did, you, what did you think of the North when you were a teenager? Did it ever come into your head? Could, it, could this place have been fucking Australia for all you cared? What did you think? Like, Because I always say, to, especially to the, to the people down south that yep. come on the podcast, because <laughs> one thing I like to do with the podcast is I say to people, like, the North isn't what you think it is. Yeah. Um, so what was your interpretation? What was your ex- interpretation of the North when you were so growing it, up? So we never, we never came up to the North. We yeah. never got brought up to the North. Um, you knew it as 
the troubles on television. Like, obviously, yeah. I was born in 91. Good Friday Agreement was when <laughs> I was, like, eight or something. But even after that, of course, in popular uh, culture, mm. that was what it was famous for. So it was... We were a stranger. I was a, str I was a stranger to it. It was very prominent in your consciousness that it was there. But... Like in recent years, I've got big into re I've read just great books about it, and I've become friends with people up here, and I gig here, um, and I'm fascinated with it, and love the people, and reading the books about it, I feel guilty. I feel guilty about that. Yeah, we didn't come up, and that lack of knowledge, and I do feel, and I understand the north. A lot of people in the north are Catholics, in the north, particularly, might feel felt abandoned. Yeah, by the south after we got our own independence, we just went on with things. Well, yeah. right. Um, so that's how I feel about it in hindsight. But I remember, I remember, uh, I got a talk from Desi O'Hare, the Border Fox. Remember him? Oh, he was the, he was in the IRA. Well, he was in the INLA, but he was, but was that he, like the Diet IRA. Yeah, it was like, the, yeah. It's like the Pepsi Max. Absolutely, it's Pepsi Max. <laughs> just like for sexy people. Was that people. the Irish Nationalist Liberation Army? That's right. Um, and they were kind of, I think they were particularly entrenched in like criminal activity and extortion and different things, even down south in Dublin and stuff. But he was like, they were called a baby-faced assassin, apparently involved in 33 murders like he he kidnapped uh, a dentist cut off their finger it was, oh, i remember that Jay. yeah that was in the mid 90s wasn't it uh late 80s. yeah yeah late 80s coming into yeah, the yeah. 90s actually he got arrested in kilkenny he was coming through erlingford and he was in the back seat and this is how dangerous he was the army just set up a fucking checkpoint, uh, checkpoint and opened fire as he came around the corner in a car just fucking like literally right. no chances taken with this cunt open fire the lad who was driving the car, Desi was in the back, just got fucking absolutely laid up. He's actually the brother of the fella that painted our house, as it happened, in Kilkenny. His, his brother lived there. The, the brother was driving Desi O'Hare. But your Desi got shot, or he got riddled with bullets. But like 50 cent, he fucking, he stayed going, right? So anyway. <laughs> stayed going. Get Richard I sure, so was working the bed, to be on the floor. He'd be on the floor. <laughs> but so anyway, when we were in Medjugorje, I was in Medjugorje on a pilgrimage when I was in my teenage years, because that's the shite we were at. That's exactly the kind of stuff Mike Rice would do. <laughs> yeah. If I get a phone call tomorrow and go, hey, Andrew, there's been a shooting at a Buddhist temple in yeah. Paris. I'm like, was Mike Rice in France by any chance? <laughs> When I saw, to put it this way, I was very disappointed by the Dalai Lama's behaviour. Anyway. <laughs> but it was in line with the brand. Uh, but it was in line with the brand. Um, no, the only people who were delighted about that was the fucking Catholic Church. They, oh, were, yeah. they were definitely like, see? We're it all, is cool. We're all, we're all weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could see you. Pope rang them up. We're not so different, you and I, you know. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, but, um, but anyway, Desi O'Hare, so he gave us a fucking, he gave us, he was out in Medjugorje as well. He'd found God in the fucking jail. And so he came in and he fucking, sure, he was he was more shrapnel than man. He'd been shot so much, you know. And he came in and gave us this talk about, you know, he was, Asher, ah, sure, listen, I was a rotten egg for fuck's sake. And I, he's after, lad, he was just stone cold killer for sadistic as well, apparently. Like, you know, and and I don't know why at the head of our fucking group thought it'd be a great idea. Get this, you here <laughs> to talk to these. He'll, he'll teach us a few things. <laughs> just taught us how to fucking. This is the life. This is the life. <laughs> this, this is, is the, the life. life. <laughs> like Jesus Maxi dancing into my room but uh, so anyway so he comes in and gives us a talk next day on the paper Big Sun on this on the Sun paper it was like Desio Prayer they pictured him in fucking you know of course yeah. like in Medjugorje and he gives us this big talk he's been Jesus and the Lord and what you need lads you shouldn't kill 30 people it's not the way <laughs> you know 20, on, 28 is good 20 <laughs> <laughs> 28 will do you try 28 I think you'll be fine but anyway then two weeks later Fucking, he's like down. He's like pictures him with the fucking with the monk and the fucking kid. You know, he's right back into it. Just fucking, you know, it's come out of retirement. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like fucking Paul Scholes when he comes back <laughs> for the second season. Like that's yeah. mental. Yeah. And when you come to Belfast now and you go around, and obviously you know you you do a podcast with, with Victoria Victoria yeah. Angeloni. I do yeah. a podcast called Guide to Parenting. I do another podcast with a guy called Rob Moriarty, who's an Irish fella in London as well, called Big Mike and the Chief. Um, and that's more, I, 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 I listen to both of them. The Big Mike Chief is the more uh, absurd one, I'd say. But, um, but uh, yeah, and Belfast now, you 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 the question lined up there. Yeah, so lips. what do you think, when you walk around the city and you go out and you meet the people and you have the drinks and stuff like that and you kind of do your gigs and stuff, were you kind of a bit like, oh my God, I never realised that, like when I when I was in London and oh, the first time I came here to perform, I was like, yeah. what to expect? You actually come over and go, this is great crack. Yeah. Why, is, why haven't I done this 
earlier. That's right. Yeah. Well, you just had a fucking stupid cartoon version in our, in our heads. That it was like, yeah, you know, just, like in your tell, head, yeah, yeah, like they just there tell are you, bombs, like, there are like, guns. Like where I live now, like, I yeah. mean, I mean, I, I tell told stories about where I live. People, some people say like, geez, I wouldn't be going up there. I'm like, listen, yeah. I've never felt so safe yeah. and so welcome. In Hollywood, baby. Well, yeah. Well, just next to it. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, but that's how I feel as well. So I, I go around and I came up here. First off, like the, I mean, the comedy scene they have going up here is unbelievable. And again, it's similar to the country Irish, like rural people in the south of Ireland. There is a turn of phrase up here. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I think what did fucking like Aaron McCann and friends, friends like he just says like. It's so funny, I, man. He's like, oh, sure, that fella is as rare as hen's teeth. Yeah. As rare as hen's teeth. You know, there's more fat in a hen's ankle than that cunt. Look at him. Like, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You know, like just there's a turn for people. Here, I think the people in the north of Ireland, this isn't just being liquors. I think are the funniest. Yeah. They're funniest cunts. Yeah, they really are. They, they like are. anywhere in the world. They don't realise it though. They're it's so very normal funny. For them. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unbelievable. Mike, thank you so much for coming on Cork the Norton. I really do appreciate it. Mike, no what's your Instagram and stuff? At Mike Rice Comedy on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> to watch it. I only, the only solo show I'm doing coming up in Ireland is Cork on July 28th. If anyone wants to come to that. Oh, well, don't worry, you're going to be down. over and back all the time anyway. Well, and then also, yeah, time, and then, yeah. you know, you'll eventually be doing solo shows here. Yeah, I'll hopefully like be doing show in the black so box in the next year. So, obviously, well. listen, get on, follow Mike. Mike's got podcasts and stuff like that, so make sure you do uh, stay tuned and follow him. And also, when it does come to Belfast to do shows and solo shows and stuff, make sure you check out uh, the stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for coming on to Cork the North this week. Listen, tickets for the live show in the link below, 4th of June, Sunday the 4th of June, 3 o'clock. Buy the tickets. Come see us live also as well. And also check out the Patreon, £3.00 a month for three extra episodes and listen we need to keep the fucking lights on here all right the lights are off now. they're off they turned right? off so of the lack if of, you want yeah. to come on come on put it back on sign sign up to the patreon loads of extra episodes and there will be come on to fuck don't be mike, tight mike, two tell coats him. of paint mike, don't be tell him. the worst thing you can be in life and this is genuine yeah, yeah. and it is it, you're, you're, right, like, you're a dog you're a dead dying dog fucking, is to be main main you don't be main as dyke water you don't do it you don't want to be known as... I don't, don't want know. to have children who look at their parent, main parents. I don't no. know. I don't know what he's saying. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm under the influence of... Sign a up to the fucking stone. Patreon. Sloan. 